Alright, so in this video I'm going to show you guys how to uh, download, verify, and install uh, the Monero GUI wallet, but I'm going to use advanced mode. Uh, advanced mode basically means that you're going to be running your own node. You don't have to trust anybody else um, to send and receive transactions with Monero. It's the best way to use Monero. Um, yeah, so the first thing you want to do is you don't want to download this, uh, this program called GTK Hash. And then you want to go to uh, Get Monero. Dot org. You want to go to downloads, you want to go to GUI wallet, and then you want to hit the Linux 64 bit. Uh, once you've downloaded that, we're going to verify this download to make sure that it was indeed the file that you thought you were going to download. Choose the file from my downloads with uh, GTK hash right here. Press open, and I'm going to hash it. Take the SHA 256 right here. Uh, press Control F, paste that in, and there you go, matches up. You definitely want to do this whenever you're dealing with cryptocurrency. It's security thing. Uh, yeah, you, d you don't want somebody giving you the wrong file, trying to steal your coins, try to be malicious, whatever, right? You don't want to deal with it. Just it's an easy thing to do, especially on Linux. Just do it, right? All right. So now that we're done with that, we're gonna go into our downloads folder gonna extract this to the desktop press select I'm gonna go ahead and pause this because it takes a second for me and there we go looks like it's been extracted so we can close out of this now and here is our extracted folder so we're gonna open that go in here now what I like to do is I like to run the node in the terminal separate from the wallet because I like to see what's going on you can run the node in the background of the wallet itself, but it doesn't show much. Like you, you can't really tell if something's going on. If if you're uh, trying to sync up to the node or something and nothing is happening, it's it doesn't really give a great visual indicator. Um, so I prefer to actually run the node in the terminal. The way you do that is you just right click here, press open terminal, and just type dot slash Monero D. And it'll just start running the node right there. Um, as you can see, my node's only two blocks behind. But your node, if this is the first time you're doing this, it's going to be years behind, right? Monero started in 2014. So whenever you're watching this, that's how many years forward you have to sync up. Um, I think as of right now, it's January 2021. The Monero blockchain is about 80 gigabytes. So yeah keep that in mind you can you can launch this with a flag um, you can look at that on the internet somewhere uh, store the blockchain in a different location and you can store it on an external drive or a different drive or something this will if you just start it this way this will just store it to the default location right so anyway I like doing it like that and then you just want to double click on this app image here open this up choose your language press since we're running our own node we want to do advanced mode and we're gonna do create new wallet name your wallet here I'm gonna name it test this is your mnemonic seed you don't want to give this to anybody this is the key to your money okay I've seen so many times people just give this up heard stories about people just giving it up thinking they're getting help their wallets not working right uh, somebody tells them, oh yeah, I can fix that for you. Just give me your seed. They're just going to steal your money, right? Don't do that. If anybody's asking for your seed, they're just trying to steal your money. Automatically just disregard anything they say. They're just lying to you, right? So just, you need to protect this as much as you can. Don't leave it on your computer. Don't ever write it on your computer. Don't put in a note document on your computer. Write it down on a piece of paper and store it somewhere, physically. That's the safest place for it, okay? Wallet restore height. This is basically just telling your wallet software where to start scanning in the blockchain for your coins. Um, because Monero is private, it needs to start looking for them in the blockchain, right? Um, now, let's say that you're restoring an older wallet that you had or something like that. And you put in a restore height of like today and you made this wallet three years ago. Well, if you do that, your wallet's going to show zero balance because 
you're telling the wallet to start scanning from today when the wallet is three years old. It's not going to be able to see what happened if you tell it to start today, right? You need to start three years ago. If you don't remember this number, it's okay. You can just start from zero and scan from there. But write this, just write this down with your seed. It's not that big of a deal. It's something else to remember. But if you do forget it, not a big deal. Just scan from zero. It'll be a little more time consuming, but you'll be all right. Make a password here. Make a stronger password than this. I'm just doing this for videos. All right, so here's the difference between advanced and simple mode. Um, Daemon settings. So this is going to say start a node automatically in the background. Obviously, we already started the node. It's not going to do that. But if I didn't start the node manually like that, it would do that. And we wouldn't be able to see what's going on. I like having this visual indicator, seeing what's going on, things like that. Bootstrap node. This is if your friend has a node or you found a node somebody was advertising on the internet or something. You can do that. You can use that. Put in the IP and port. Always a risk connecting to a remote node. Your IP can leak. Um, the node could just stop relaying transactions. And actually there was an attack on Monero recently where um, there was a bunch of malicious nodes that came online and they would stop. They wouldn't relay transactions. Um, so the best thing to do, if you're looking at this video, you probably already know, the best thing to do is just to run your own node, right? You don't need to worry about any of that stuff. Just run your own node. You don't have to trust anybody else but yourself, right? And that's what this stuff's all about, you know, not having to trust anybody. So we're going to go ahead and press next. This just gives you a summary of what you've decided in your password again. And this will open it up. So now it's going to connect to the node. It's going to take just a second while it is connecting to Daemon. Sometimes it takes a second. Besides that, um, you're going to go to the receive tab here if you want to send money from an exchange into your wallet. Um, this is your primary address. You can just copy that. You can see right here, address copy to cl uh, clipboard. Um, all primary addresses in Monero start with a four and all Sub addresses start with an 8, so I just clicked this button here to create a new address. I'm just going to label it um, help because I'm helping you out. Um, see, you can see the difference here. Your primary address is always going to be a 4, no matter what. Sub address is always going to be an 8. Does that matter that much? No. The addresses don't show up on the blockchain anywhere, but it's always good to generate a new address whenever you're requesting money from or sending money from an exchange or a person or anybody because if you use the same address over and over and over again people are going to be able to say oh you know I know who's at that was Jim's address I, I saw him posted on that forum over there and he's also posting it over here you know uh, so that's got to be Jim you know he's, he's going by a pseudonym over here but on this one he's on this other forum he's not so you know, you can see how people can, like, kind of collude together, even exchanges. Exchanges could be sharing information to, with each other and colluding and being like, okay, this is this guy. Can they realistically do much with that information? Probably not, but if you want to maximize your privacy with Monero, just generate a new address every time. You can generate thousands of these. Um, if you want to send, you just put in the recipient's address here with the amount. Um, Fees are incredibly cheap as well on Monero, considering all the privacy features and everything else. Um, so we can go to this advanced tab and we can go to mine. This is another uh, thing with the uh, advanced mode in the wallet that is not available in simple mode. You can solo mine. So solo mining is different than pool mining. Most of the time when you hear about somebody mining cryptocurrency, they're talking about pool mining. Pool mining is basically when you get together with a bunch of other people on the internet and put all your hash rate together and you try to all mine and find a block. And when you all find a block, uh, the block gets the block reward gets split up in proportion to how much hash rate you've been providing, right? Solo mining is different than that. It's literally just you. You're mining all by yourself and you're trying to find a block on your own. And when you find that block, you get all of the reward, right? So 
when you're solo mining, the chance of you finding a block is going to go down by a lot. But when you do find a block, you're going to get the entire reward for that block. Um, with Bitcoin, you cannot solo mine with a CPU. In fact, I don't even know if you can solo mine. I mean, obviously you can solo mine, but I don't know if it's like practical to do on Bitcoin. On Monero, it is. Um, I had a friend actually that was mining uh, just with one CPU, and he found two blocks within a year and got the full reward, right? So that's pretty good. Um, you can't do that with many cr cryptocurrencies. Most of the time, solo mining isn't isn't really possible. Um, so here, you get to set the CPU threads. I'm going to set it to four, and then I'm going to do uh, start mining. So as you can see here in the node, the node actually said miner thread was started. It started four threads because I set four threads here. And then if you look in the wallet here, it'll tell you that you're mining at 2400 hashes. Now, depending on what kind of CPU you have, your hash rate is going to be different and also what kind of threads you're using. And it'll also show you the chance here of finding a block. Now, obviously, with only 2,500 hashes a second, I only have a 1 in a 1,000 chance of finding a block. Those odds aren't very good, right? This is a Ryzen 2700X. I'm also recording with it and doing some other things on my computer, so this is about half the hash rate I would get if I was doing absolutely nothing on this computer. So it would probably be about a 1 in 500 chance of finding a block if I was doing nothing else with this computer except solo mining. Now, there's 365 days in a year. That's finding a block about every year and a half with a 2700X. Those, those odds are, you know, not great, but they're not impossible. You know, with something like Bitcoin, you wouldn't get anything close to that. And this is with a pretty bare bones. Like, it's a newer processor, but it's not an expensive one by any means. It's not a crazy one. If you get a, you know, 3950X or something like that, if you have a very crazy machine going I bet you know I, I know some Ryzen pro processors can mine at like 16,000 hashes a second you know that's not unheard of either so that'll probably give you like a one in a hundred or one in two or three hundred or something. that's pretty good I would actually solo mine at that point if it were me um, so you can see there's other options here um, I'm actually gonna turn this off just in case it's just because I'm recording and you can see here in the node Minor thread was stopped. See, I love having this this visual here of telling me what's going on. Um, some other things you can do in this node actually is you can type in a version. This will let you know what version you're running if you're worried that you're on an outdated version or something. You just type that. You can also type status. This will tell you the block height, how synced up you are, if you are mining, um, the network hash rate. Um, connections, uptime, things like that. Go into settings here. You can rescan the wallet balance. If your balance is showing zero, that's a good thing to do. I think I believe that starts from zero. I'm not positive. Um, show seed and keys. Don't use this wallet. I'm showing this stuff publicly to everybody. If you didn't write down your keys like earlier, like I told you to, second chance, there you go. It'll show you the block height if you missed that. Um, your primary address, secret view keys, things like that. Don't use this wallet. Again, this is all public information now. Huge risk to be using this. Um, go back to settings here. Show you interface. You can change some settings here to make it light theme, whatever. No, this is uh, if you want to connect to a remote node or local node. Like I was saying, if you press remote, you can put in your friend's details of their uh, node here and connect to that log info things like that so yeah and then if you want to close the wallet you just press the x up here and it'll ask you if you want to stop the node or keep it running so if you stop it it'll automatically stop it even if you start it like this if you can't see it in the background it'll also stop it i'm just going to keep it running like this and then i'm going to show you how to stop this here um the best way is just control c um you can press the x up here i'm a little worried about that when that happens because I'm always a little weary that it's going to corrupt the blockchain. If your blockchain does get corrupted, you're going to have to probably resync the entire thing. So the best thing to do is just control C. There you go. You're done. So yeah, I hope that uh, this helped you out. Um, if you like this, uh, go ahead and like it. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And yeah, thank you very much.